so the standard Lehman Ross is perhaps looking better than ever, but the core manticore has caught a slight nerf. Let's talk about the Imperial Guard points changes and what they mean for the faction. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where this week we've been going over the points changes from the new chapter approved. I thought it was high time that we took a look at the Imperial Guard and what's going to be changing for them. Guard are unfortunately one of the weaker factions in 40k right now, so the same can pretty much be said of any faction that's still only got an 8th edition codex and competing with the 9th edition ones. The biggest recent change that they got was getting their Lehman Rosses a 2 plus armor save, so I don't think at the moment that it's really going to propel them to any sort of top tier status. Chapter approved with some points rebalancing, it's usually a decent place where Games Workshop can make some changes, but unfortunately they have been rather light touch with these guard points changes. There's literally just the 4 alterations, 3 buffs and 1 nerf, and to be honest guard needs far far more than this if they are going to seriously compete. We'll talk through each of the points changes in this video, particularly focusing on the Lehman Ross and Manticore changes, which are basically some of the most important units in the faction now, and do genuinely change how they compete against other units in the book. Let's start out with the good stuff then, and the Lehman Ross battle tank has dropped 10 points, going from 140 points base to 130, though in reality, as you always need to take a whole mounted weapon, either a heavy bolter, heavy flamer or las cannon, the minimum cost is still 145 points for the chassis. Still though, that's a small but meaningful buff, they're down 7% from before, and given that Lehman Rosses were already looking fairly solid after that 2 plus armor save upgrade, this is pretty fantastic news for making them one of the most competitive units that Guard have right now. I think they now might be genuinely fine with tank commanders, and I feel like if there's ever a unit that Games Workshop need to get right within the Guard decks, it's the Lehman Ross. You don't really want the iconic battle tank being a liability that you don't want to take. If you are just looking into armor spam, there are very few factions that can put this much toughness 8 2 plus save armor on the board now, particularly not with them being somewhat threatening. 6 demolisher tanks will now cost you less than 900 points, that's a pretty crazy 72 wounds worth of toughness 8 2 plus save goodness, and while they certainly have their weaknesses, speed, range, and being tagged in combat, for things that they do manage to catch out in the open, they are going to absolutely obliterate just through weight of fire. I kind of feel that they are getting to the point where they're making armor heavy guard good enough to be worth it. In 9th edition there has been a bit of a pivot away from almost entirely armored lists, just with the need to fight for objectives and put troops in the midfield. You still definitely were going to want screening and obsec units, but I think that one of the best army builds right now would genuinely be spamming quite a lot of Lehman Rosses between these guys and tank commanders. One thing that I'm always kind of interested in whenever they adjust the points for Rosses is how they balance out against tank commanders, and throughout 8th and 9th edition so far, it really hasn't been very balanced to be honest, the tank commanders are pretty much flatly superior, not really costing all that many more points, but between hitting on 3s and being able to order themselves to reroll 1s to hit, it just means that their massively boosted damage output far outweighed the slight boost to durability for the points that you got for fielding the regular pattern Lehman Rosses en masse. Now if you compare a standard issue Lehman Ross in terms of damage output, the equivalent points cost in tank commanders gets you 16% better shooting per point, Obviously tank commanders have way more firepower due to hitting on 3s and re-rolling 1s, but they also cost a lot more, so that brings the shooting advantage down quite a bit. And now for the points cost, the regular Lehman Rosses are now 31% more durable, in terms of wounds for the points that you put on the table. I think in general, people tend to prefer things that are more killy than more durable on the whole in 9th, often you're able to hide more fragile things out of line of sight, then jump on and fire your shooting. But I think at this stage you might genuinely be getting to the point where the durability does outweigh the shooting when it's this much more. At least now I think it's going to be a genuine question as to whether or not you want tank commanders or regular Rosses. Tank commanders certainly still have their benefits though. Hitting on threes means they're a lot more resistant to minus one modifiers than the standard Ross. And they also act as a better focal point for things like stratagems or tank aces. If you put buffs on a bigger more points intensive chassis they're going to go a bit further. Still though, between a points drop and a 2 plus armor save, I can't help but think that people are going to be putting more Lehman Rosses of all stripes on the tabletop. It's not really too bad a day for the Guard Armored Company. In less positive news though, the Manticore is going up 10 points, and this one is a slightly painful nerf for the Guard, as currently a Manticore with the full payload upgrade for damage 3 shots is perhaps one of the most auto-include units in the Codex. Certainly at the start of 9th, it was perhaps the best Ignore's line of sight shooting option in the entire game, though I think probably beaten into second place now by Tyranid Hiveguard and all the crazy amount of buffs that you can stack on them. I would have said Orc Squig Boggies as well, but they have just gone up in points significantly. In any case, rather than 145 points for your 2d6 strength 10 AP-2 damage 3 shots, you're now going to be paying 155, and that's going to be a 7% increase in cost. 
It does make them a slight bit less tempting, though to be honest, even if you are running two of them, it's only a 20 point nerf to a guard force, and being able to put out that amount of strength 10 damage 3 shooting is really still quite an asset. Still seems worth the points, but it now genuinely weighs up a bit more whether or not you want a manticore or a basilisk. Currently basilisks are 125 points, but a 2d6 pick the highest strength 9 AP-3 damage D3 shot, unless you give them full payload as well of course. And it is kind of interesting, now manticores and basilisks both seem to be pretty well balanced against a common toughness 8 vehicle target, both of those get 2 wounds per 100 points of unit firing at them. They both have their positives and weaknesses, the manticore strength 10 will be better against toughness 5 units, the more shots might help them out a bit more against infantry, but the lower AP won't help them as much against really high save targets. Per points of model as well, the basilisk is also tougher. Still though, I do feel that manticores might well still have the edge, if you're going to be using the full payload tank ace traits to make them all damage 3. Again, a manticore is basically a bigger model to apply that buff to. It just goes a little bit more efficient on a bigger, more costly unit, even if they are a similar efficiency to the basilisk. Overall, I'd say that manticores are still probably the best choice for artillery in the guard codex with full payload. If you're not taking full payload, then I think that they're really quite well balanced, basilisks and manticores being fairly even. Finally, we've got a couple of buffs to really lesser used units within the codex, a 10 point drop to the Bane Wolf variant of the Hellhound, and a big 30 point drop to the Deathstrike Missile Launcher, which at 150 points, I think had to be in running for one of the weakest units in the entire game of 40k. Unfortunately for both of these, I think that while the points drops are at least fairly generous, these units were just so bad before, even compared with the rest of the guard codex, that it still doesn't really make them worth running for me. The Bane Wolf's the 100 point version of the Hellhound that has a chem cannon, 8 inch range, AP-3, and wounds non-vehicles on 2s. It does only have the 1d6 shots though, and just 1 damage, and I think it just really struggles to compete against the much longer range of the Hellhound, and that one gets 2d6 shots. I guess it's still a move in the right direction, you're not quite as heavily punished for taking one, but I think if I still wanted an actual Hellhound variant, it would probably be the actual Hellhound as opposed to this. Games Workshop has at least made a token effort to balance the Death Strike. It's dropped 30 points from 150, really quite a big boost of minus 20%, but unfortunately I think that the Death Strike's datasheet just makes it so bad that it's very hard to balance with points alone. This thing would have to be ridiculously cheap to make it worth it, just due to that missile normally only launching late in the game unless you're very very lucky. Its mortal wound effect could be okay, but it's generally helpful on bunched up enemy units, and late in the game they might not be anywhere near as bunched up as they were at the start. The big cruise missile tank I think is just going to be a very hard one to balance, with all of its damage delivered in just one massive missile, I feel like it's the epitome of a unit that's very easy to make either completely broken, or pretty well entirely useless aside from the meme, which I'd say it is now. Unfortunately that really does seem to be it for the guard, I think Games Workshop could have thrown them a bit more of a bone while they're waiting for their codex. With guard where they are at the moment, I genuinely think that you could have taken basically the entire codex and dropped the points cost by around about 10% or so, and that might still not be enough to make them top tier competitive. Overall, between the Ross's change and the Knackman secondary options, I do feel that overall it might be a small boost to the guard out of this, but the Astra Militarum are very much still waiting for their revamped codex. In any case, let me know what you think down in the comments below. Will you be looking to experiment with more regular Rosses? Do Manticores still make the cut? I'm genuinely interested as to where guard lists might go after this. If you've been enjoying the videos, feel free to subscribe to All Specs Tactics. I've covered a fair few of the other points changes from chapter approved, I'll hopefully be wrapping up a few of the other factions over the next few days. Finally, if you have been enjoying all the videos on the channel, I would just like to mention that Allspets Tactics does have a Patreon page, and you can find that down in the video description. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, seeing certain videos early each week, regular votes to see what sort of things come next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways, with a chance to win some really big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support, then the link is down in the video description. In any case, an enormous thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.